think of all these proto-ecologists from way back um, to the present. So it's like such a big field of study. The, the study of the relationships between organisms and the environment, um, the place of the human in the cosmos, so many ways to talk about this. Um, so I want to give you guys a brief overview of some proto-ecologists. So ecologists before the word was coined in 1866. And then I'll show how um, it's becoming more integral these days. So I wanted to, to really drive home the point that ecology can be seen in light of a tension between holism and reductionism. And so more holistic, integrated, way of, of viewing the relations of organisms and the environment versus a more reductionistic, mechanistic, mathematical way of viewing ecology. Okay. All right, so, so just to give a sense of how ecology in different forms have been occurring throughout human history. Um, let's go back all the way to Aristotle. Okay, so Aristotle had this whole idea of an organism being composed of body and mind. And the body of every organism is related to this whole cosmic process of motion. Likewise, the mind of every organism, whether it's a human mind or an animal mind, plant, all the way down um, the chain of being, the mind of every <coughs> organism is related to the mind of God, of thought thinking itself, of roots. Um, so Aristotle's physics, very holistic. You can see this in juxtaposition with Democritus and Lucretius, Adamus, who said that all of reality can be 
reduced to um, the uncuttable, the atom. Okay, so, so with um, both Demophilus and Lucretius, they said that the universe is composed of random parts. There's a random Lucretian sort of that is making everything fall into the way it is. That there's no, um, there's no holistic, organ organized way of viewing the world. Okay, then maybe um, skipping ahead a little bit to the the modern period, you can say that other other people who had a more reductionistic approach to ecology would be people like Descartes and Bacon. famous mind-body split of Descartes, Agito versus res extensa. Um, this, this separate way of viewing the world, very um, cut up in parts, um, and also for the extent of mastering and controlling nature. You can see how, how this, is, this is another way to reduce the world in terms of individual components. Mm -hmm. But juxtaposed to Descartes and Bacon, um, you have guys like Violet and Spinoza. And I'm also in Conway, um, who composed Leibniz. I think that's how you spell it, Conway and Conway. Um, um, Carolyn Merchant talks about the death of nature, if you want to learn more about, about them. So both of them had a more holistic view. I'm, I'm just going to try to touch on a lot of things, and then later on in the discussion, um, if any of this is interesting at all, then remember so we can go back to it. Um, let's see. So then we have um, other reductionists, include um, positivists. Other polis include romantics. Um, let's see. And then you have, let's now look at, um, at Hegel. Ernst Hegel turn, coined the term ecology. Eighteen sixty-six. In terms of this holistic vision of the individual and the collective. And by ecology, it was a very spiritual thing for Hegel too. It wasn't mere mechanistic thinking. So, so ecology was coined in 1866. Then we have different ways of doing ecology, like in terms of ecosystem, which is a more reductionistic Right. Um, and that was Hansley. So ecosystem concept of ecology was about how there's energy flows throughout the world and each individual organism had its particular role in the whole ecosystem. So there's producers and consumers and decomposers. And they're all, you know, working together to keep the whole thing going. And, and this is a very mathematicized, happy way of viewing the world. Um, opposed to that, you have ideas of um, the community concept of ecology. So that was um, Elton. Um, you could also look at Leopold, um, other Leopold in terms of this idea of the biotic community. Um, we do an awful lot. And then um, another holistic view of ecology is the idea of superorganism. 
So this is Clements and Forbes. And um, so a very holistic idea that every part of the world is similar to organs and limbs within an individual body. Each part of the world composes its big superorganism. And uh, this is really closely related to Gaia theory um, with Lovelock and Marcos. Let's see. Other, other ways to view ecology in a very <coughs> adventuristic way include, um, include Odin. With, um, he had a whole integrative ecology. Um, and it was integrated in the sense of looking at science, but also bringing in politics and economics. So, so somewhat integral, but not quite as integral as it could be. Um, and then, let's see, who else? Other reductionist um, ways of doing ecology include like population ecology, and um, chaos theory and um, disequilibrium, hash dynamics and stuff. So we do All right, so in a nutshell, some views of ecology. So then we can see, so what, what is integral ecology? And, and basically, um, a way of looking at ecology that tries to be more holistic, more integral, integrated and um, and you can see see the term integral ecology being coined and first published in 1995 okay. and so in 1995 there there was the first publication of integral ecology it was in a journal called concilium in an essay that was co-authored by Leonardo Boff. And Boff is a liberation theologian, has a book called Cry of the Earth, Cry of the Poor. He connects environmental justice with social justice. And coming from um, a Christian perspective, um, looking at the dialogue between North and South, and showing that we need to have justice, particularly in developing countries. And part of that has to do with our Christian, like if we are Christian, we need to, to have a stewardship approach to managing and taking care of God's creation, which includes care, taking care of uh, poor humans. So integral ecology, for Bach was a way of connecting humans with the whole cosmos and seeing how the place of the human is a caretaker in the larger earth community. And um, humans and the earth are taking part in evolutionary cosmic processes. So your, your role as a human has to include your role as a cosmic citizen. And Bach has, has a really cool idea of saying more integral ecology has to do with finding or cultivating a sense of socio-cosmic well-being. Mm -hmm. um, so that was in 95. In 2009, Bach co-authored a book um, called The Tao of Liberation, um, An Ecology of Transformation. And he further elaborates ideas of integral ecology in connection with social and environmental justice. Um, so, in a nutshell, that's Bob. Um, so, he first published an article that uses the term integral ecology. There's two other people in '95 
who independently came up with this term intergalactology. They didn't publish it as such, though, as intergalactology. Um, uh, one was um, Thomas Berry, and the other was Ken Wilber. Okay. So Berry, Thomas Berry, um, a geologian, um, a theologian for the year, he, in, well, in conversations with Drew Dellinger, one of our PCC students, he, he said this word, integral ecology. And then, so, so he, was, he was thinking of this idea, but he didn't quite publish it in 95. Um, he did, though, publish this term, integrated earth studies, which is an idea saying that whenever we study the earth, we need to have an integral focus. So we need to look at the lithosphere, and the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere, and the biosphere, and the neosphere, and have all of that in our concept of the earth community. He didn't use those words though. Um, the sphere, the sphere, the sphere. He used the um, rock sphere and water sphere and life sphere and in, a, in a way to, to just use common everyday language to describe this really, um, really important concept. And, and Barry, like Boff, is, is bringing up ecology in a sense of its <coughs> It's a whole study that places the human in its relation to the entire cosmos. It says the story of the human takes place in the, in the whole story of the universe. So we need to understand how our, our, our self is part of this whole cosmic process of becoming. Yes, it's idea of cosmogenesis, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Um, showing how the human is part of this whole process of becoming that's taking place you know, throughout the cosmos. Um, so that was 95. Um, Ken Wilber in 95 published a book called Sex Ecology Spirituality. He didn't explicitly say the word or the term integral ecology in that book, but he did had, he did explicitly say, an integral environmental ethic. And so his whole book, his whole process is about integral, and so sex ecology spirituality is an implicit um, plea for integral ecology. And Wilbur's whole approach, uh, one aspect of it that's very huge is awful, all quadrants, all levels, model, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Um, so that was in 95. Since then, Wilbur has used integral ecology as a phrase. Um, but two of his colleagues who draw heavily on his work use the, the phrase integral ecology. Um, in 2009, Michael Zimmerman and Sean Esborn Cargins published a book called Integral Ecology. How many of you guys have read? Yeah. yeah. It's definitely worth reading. Um, so this is um, Michael Zimmerman and uh, Sean Esborn Harkins. So in shorthand, I will say Zimmerman and something like that. Okay. Um, so why don't I explain a little bit about Wilbur's idea of integral ecology, and particularly in light of Aquil. And then that will help elaborate what Barry means by, um, by the cosmogenetic principle, and, and we'll get a better sense of how these guys relate to each other. Right, so, all right, just real quick, a basic framing of aqua. You've got four quadrants. You have the, the individual and the collective. So, 
um, and then you have interior and exterior. Okay. So one way to think about this is I, the individual interior aspect of a being, and we have we, the community of that interiority, and we have it, which is the the outside, the exterior aspect of an individual, and then you have it, which is the uh, system of all the particular individuals. Okay, so, so I, we, and it, or it. Um, should I say more about that, or? Can you talk about the levels? Levels, okay, so you got body, mind, and spirit as three levels that are included within each of these quadrants. Okay, so you have um, the, the body, the, the physical, material stuff of an organism. You have the, the mental, um, interiority, subjectivity. Um, and then you have the, the spirit, or more um, subtle, um, religious um, ways of viewing individuals or societies. So, so each of these, you know, body, mind, spirit, really in all of this. Um, so I give her a nutshell for now. We can go back if we have more questions. Um, so, so I, we, and it. Or it. Okay, so this is. Um, Wolver, and then um, Hargens, um, and oh yes, thanks. Zimmerman and Ezra Hargens. Okay. Um, this is very closely related to the cosmogenetic principle of Thomas Berry. Okay. So the cosmogenetic principle, let me spell that out. Cosmogenetic principle. There's three main aspects, all corresponding with I, we, and it. Okay, you have autopoiesis. Can I spell that right? Yeah. Um, then you have community or communion. And then differentiation. So, autopoiesis, the um, self creating aspect of individuals. So, the fact that every organism has this interiority or subjectivity of trying to maintain itself as it's changing. Those, every interiority, every singular interiority, I, is a being with others. So there's multiple individuals making up a we. So you have this communion of subjects, not a collection of objects. So, so individuals relating to each other, it's this whole communion, the earth community. And then differentiation is the whole process whereby the exteriors of the cosmos, they're divided up, and so each individual has an interior and an exterior aspect. All taking place in this, within the same cosmogenetic process. The, the cosmos, the world, is continually becoming it's not some stagnant, created thing that never changes. It's an evolutionary process. Okay. Um, this is also related to Teilhard de Chardin's idea of complexity consciousness. Okay. And so, um, so complexity would be the differentiation. Okay. 
And then the consciousness would be out of basis of the Okay? So, um, so one, maybe improvement or further development of this idea of complexity consciousness that Tarrant had is that Barry shows that it's not just like a general consciousness, but it's it's an individual and a collective taking place. Um, okay. So that's a lot. But then I'm gonna further elaborate a little bit. Okay, so I need to erase this. So what I want to do now is show how the three people who independently came up with the term integral ecology, um, how, what they're drawing upon, like what sources they're using, what has influenced their thought. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline a little, a little chart. Okay, so we're gonna have, um, we're gonna look at off and Mary and um, Wilder and uh, <laughs> um, and Zimmerman and Warren Hart. Okay. So we're going to do all that, and then we're going to look at PCC and show which of the sources that these three groups, what they use to show how that relates to what we're studying here at California Institute of Integral Studies in the Cosmic Cosmology Conscious Program. So here are some of the sources that we're going to look at. We're going to, we're going to compare these guys to themselves to show, like, does Bach draw on Barry or Zimmerman? Okay, so we're gonna have Bach over here, and Barry, and Wilder, Zimmerman, and Hargens. And then we're also going to look at a few other people. So we're gonna look at um, Tayard. Okay, I guess you're done. We're going to look at Alma Leopold, postmodern thought, eco feminism, and um, world religions and spirituality. So he brought 
on most of these sources. Okay. Then we have um, Thomas Berry. So Thomas Berry is not considered a fossil for whatever reason. Um, he does draw his own work, and um, he does not talk about Wilbur. As far as I know, he's he's not. He doesn't bring out people. Um, he is hugely influenced by Taylor and influenced by Leopold, at least according to Robert McDermott. I haven't really, I haven't read enough on Sperry to know this in particular, but I'll take Robert's word for it. Um, Postmodern thought, not so much. Not so much. Um, Ecofeminism, definitely, and is hugely influenced by all of those religious traditions. Um, I'll give a quick shout out to the Forum on Religion and Ecology, which, which is an organization based at Yale now that started in light of Thomas Berry's influence. Um, so the whole idea of the great work and part of the great work of our human civilization right now is to call upon the traditions all around the world um, that are you know, religious and spiritual. Um, okay, then moving right along to Wilbur and Zimmerman and Esmeralda Farnes. Okay, so they are influenced by Bach. I'll, I'll just say right now, they are integral in a, like, integral. Like, they are trying to include everything. That's their whole thing. So they are checks for all these. They, especially Zimmerman and Esmeralda Harkins, in their book, Integral Ecology, they have an appendix of over 200 different, different movements of ecology. And they, they're trying to integrate everything out there into, into um, a coherent system so that we can have comprehensible solutions for environmental issues. So they, they are, so all these people, plus so many. Um, yeah. um, okay, so now let's look at PCC and see briefly what PCC is drawing on. And by PCC, I, let, let's look at um, Sean Kelly and Elizabeth Allison. Okay, so by integral ecology, Sean is saying that there is four or five aspects to integral ecology. Um, so you have the fact that it's a planetary movement. It is um, enchanted. It's engaged. It is what else? Um, yeah, transdisciplinary and evolutionary. Yeah. This last one is kind of redundant. Um, ecology, as, as such, is an evolutionary science, but it's worth putting up there. Um, so you have Sean's, Sean's basic framework. And then you have um, Elizabeth Allison, who draws on um, after network theory and science and technology studies and um, ecofeminism. Uh, religion ecology. Could you repeat the first one? Um, no. Actor network theory. Okay. Yeah. Um, in a nutshell, it's basically saying that we're all in this network. Everything in the world is an actor. And so the theory is trace out all the 
the different patterns and ways that the actors are relating to each other in this big network. Mm -hmm. Um, Sean draws heavily on Marin and your Marin. Um, and what else? I mean, so so those are our two main integral biologists in our program. <coughs> professors. Um, so who do we draw on? Well, as far as Both, I'm not sure. You guys know? No? I don't think so. So no. let's just take no. off this um, until somebody shows otherwise. There are people in our program, like um, Adrian, who is, who's heavily influenced by a bot. And I think he'll be pulling together his work in his dissertation. But as far as our general mission, yeah, that's a very new part. So I don't, we don't really do much to react to that. Um, Thomas Berry, on the other hand, one of the main influences of our program. Um, we do talk about Wilbur and Zimmerman and Esmond Harkins. Um, Sean Esmond Harkins, um, he was a PCC student, and now he teaches at JFK in the Triple Theory program that he developed. Um, and so we, we're, we're drawing on them not very heavily, though, a lot more dialogue um, between our PCC way of doing it and um, the awful way that needs to be done. Um, Teilhard is huge for PCC. Leopold is wanting to be there. I don't know if really, has anybody read any Leopold yet? In Just PCC? Excerpts. Excerpts? Okay, let's put it in. I know the faculty had a whole reading group on the same, the same kind of that. Um, so I know they want to bring in a little. Um, and then postmodernism, yeah, especially with Lorin and um, all of this stuff, postmodern science, it's weak. So we need more. It's um, a half check. A half check? Okay, I'll give you a half check. Half -check. Okay. Check minus. Uh, check minus. Check minus. All right. Check minus. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, eco feminism. I I would fit check minus too. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. We need more work here. And theater. Um, and theater. Yeah, it's probably check minus. Check minus. We'll give ourselves some check pluses. Right? Okay. Tear is a check right. plus. Tear <laughs> and Barry, check plus. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Barry, check plus. Tear, check plus. Barry, check plus. Check minus. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <all> true. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that's that. So on the average, check minus. Check minus. Yeah, so you All right, so maybe, maybe this is a good time to kind of, well, I didn't talk at all about um, the student group. Let me say that real quick, and then we will go into more of that. Um, so in the summer of 2009, there was maybe, maybe about 10 to 12, mainly PCC students, who got together to have a reading group for Zimmerman and Ms. Harkin's book, Integrally Happy. Really worth checking out. Um, so we did that, and then at the end of the summer, we realized we need to get funding. Um, or anything, anything that we need to do. Um, so then we founded a group that Sean is the overseer person, the faculty. He's support. also the overseer of this group, ah. so good for Sean. Mm -hmm. Sean. Yeah. 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 Let's give yeah. Sean a check plus for that one. Is he going to show up for me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sean wanted to be here today, but he um, is at a screening for Call of Life. Uh, yeah, we're just, check it out. I'm also quite happy that we have competing 
ecologically themed PCC events. That's yes. Yes. So so we did that little reading group this summer, two thousand nine, and then we were official student group by fall two thousand nine, and put together an integral ecology forum, which was part of international education that also had um, different different days on, say, uh, interdisciplinary education and, um, I don't even remember what else. It was, it's a good week. Um, I think it's happening again this semester. So far, integral ecology isn't really represented, so that might be something we're doing. Um, so yeah, so we put on this integral ecology forum where Sean Hargens, Sean Green Hargens, came and gave um, a really nice address at the end. Um, and then in spring 2010, our little integral ecology group um, sponsored the Cosmology of Love Conference, which is a big project. This was the second of, of these uh, conferences, Cosmology of Love, that Rain Christensen helped put together. And, and yeah, so, so our group so far, we've done a re done like a little reading dialogue group and then we've done a couple conferences. Um, this semester not much has happened yet. So so that's part of the dialogue I want to have is to see so if you guys have any ideas about what you'd like to see for the group or um, or where you want to see integral ecology as a field move. Because uh, we are you know up and comers and have our place in this whole movement. So so yeah, so why don't we dialogue? Should we change our desks and make it more so we, or no? Can we put it? <laughs> um, so yeah, so personally I think we should sit in a circle. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, no, um, I'm actually already in a circle, so yeah. we'll come <laughs> What's up with this? I, we're going to try to record the question and answer. Are we recording that now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, does anybody have any, any thoughts about anything? This is a terrible circle. Different. That's the first thought. <laughs> well, no, I don't know if that makes any difference. It's like a golden ratio kind of thing. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, there's like a... Beautiful organic yeah, spiral. Um, spiral. Yes. Well, I, I thought it was interesting that um, Joanna Macy turned me on to Leonardo, Leonardo Boff by um, personal communication when I asked her for references on mutual causality since she was following that. And um, and then Adrian also, whenever I mentioned, oh yeah, Joanna said this book, he was like, ah, started telling me that. So, and it seems really important because it brings in a social justice aspect, which I think is so important. And it seems like it's spoken of to or about in literature, like about our program, but I hear zip about it in mm -hmm. classes and in discussion. So. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we need to make the zero into at least a check. My <laughs> opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um. Does anybody want to direct the camera or are you speaking? Anybody? I would love to. It's also not <laughs> fixed to the tripod. Oh. So you have to... It's going to be like reality TV. Yeah. <laughs> move well, you can move that thing, but you, you just, just have to hold on to the camera while you do it. Yeah, yeah. You can just move it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's too like handheld style. Zoom in, <laughs> zoom out. Yeah, or you can just turn it like that. I have something of an elementary question coming from outside of the philosophy, cosmology, consciousness framework. When I'm looking at these atomistic or reductionistic thinkers, my question is, are these people to be read only as enemies to a holistic movement, or um, are there ways, I mean, because this is integralism for them to be incorporated, um, and what is the role of people like, say, Descartes or Bacon's, maybe a broad uh, question as well, um, in integral ecology specifically? Um, what can we draw from these people, if anything at all? Yeah, but what are you? Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm a big defender of people like Descartes and Bacon and all the reductionists. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of it is if integral uh, philosophy and integral ecology is about holism, then it would probably be a holism of holism and reductionism. Mm -hmm. um, which is, I mean, that's just the logic of what a whole is, right? A whole is the wholeness of wholeness and whatever the opposite of wholeness would be. Um, and so, in that sense, and this is definitely the case with um, the aqua framework, all these reductionistic mm -hmm. thinkers get included. Um, they just get included in terms of the partial perspectives that they're representing. And so, like, um, Odom, Eugene Odom was one of the examples as a reductionist. And in the 70s, he was like, we need a new approach to ecology that would be more holistic. He was trying to be holistic, but he was like, we'll do science and economics. <laughs> <laughs> holistic. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's basically like a crypto-reductionistic kind of thing, where it's like a little more holistic, but still reductionistic. Um, but what it is, is that he's really good at the it and its side of ecology. So when you're doing exteriors, and you need to calculate energy flows, and you need to align that with like economic analysis of like cost and benefits and things like that, then Odin's framework is entirely helpful. Um, so a lot of what happens is that all these reductionists kind of get situated just on the exterior side of things. Um, so that'd be one answer, but as far as some of the philosophers, people like Descartes, um, the amount that they can contribute is just unfathomable. And for understanding exteriors and interiors, um, or for body, mind, and spirit. And so that's just a, a larger philosophical question of how much we can keep reinterpreting texts to make them relevant to our own lives. Um, and that would go for the religious traditions too, like even the ones that have had all kinds of environmental problems, like Christianity. Um, with all of its anthropocentrism and whatnot. So they, they would still have a lot to contribute, we just have to reread them. Mm. So we always have to reread Descartes, we have to reread Bacon and Kant, and all these people that we normally think of as too dualistic, too reductionistic. They just need to be reread and interpreted. Um, rejuvenated. Mm. Mm. Uh, I wonder if there's a different issue with the, with the binary not so much reductionism versus holism, but uh, personal personalism versus impersonalism, I could say. Where I guess I have been very influenced by Teilhard and, and Barry in the sense that I feel compelled to think about the earth and I guess the thing we have as a superorganism, but also as a person in some sense. Um, so that it uh, and not just the Earth, but you know, different ecosystems within the, uh, the larger bound system, and you know, different animal species and stuff. They have like a certain personal quality. And when I look at aqual, it seems to redefine that difference between interior and exterior to the extent that, you know, rather than referring to the exterior as you, you know, and establishing an IU relation, it, it refers to it as it. It's and so you and they, and I think if, if we were to you know, want to develop an integral ecology, somehow we have to recognize that it's not that both interior and exterior dimensions are important, which obviously they are, they are, but there's also, in constraining it that way, there's something we miss about the relationship between interiority and the ecosystems which are embedded in. Uh, and that maybe bringing a more personal quality to how we conceive mm -hmm. of nature rather than uh, it being easily objectified or external, but there's a certain personal quality to it 
I think that sometimes when I look at Wilbur's work, that that gets kind of lost. Whereas Taylor and Thomas Berry are always pointing in that direction. Does Wilbur brings that in in terms of his, so the aqua model in terms of individual collective interior exterior, um, just those elements of it would seem sort of static. But his whole point is also to make it sort of temporal and developmental. And that's the significance of the lines of development and the levels and waves of development. Mm -hmm. And so there's a temporal and progressive dimension mm -hmm. to Wilbur's understanding. And one of his uh, themes that he keeps coming back to in terms of the development of the individual is the development of a person's moral capacity mm -hmm. or their, their capacity to develop wider and wider spheres of concern or, right. or um, levels of ethical sensitivity. And so you could say that where the sense of a, a, a pervasive I-thou consciousness comes in with Wilbur's model would be at the higher waves of ethical development. That's where, that's where it would come in. Right. Yeah. Now, the thing about Thomas Berry and Brian Swim is that they would seem to say that there is one cosmology. It's supplied to us by science. And we are waiting for and encouraging religions to enter this consciousness, to enter their ecological phase, mm -hmm. which kind of seems to me, at least on the face of it, to do violence to their own mm -hmm. cosmological understandings. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I don't think that Wilbur's model is as vulnerable to, necessarily. I'm open to, I, I just thought of that with Wilbur, and maybe he is open to <coughs> his vulnerable criticism there, but I think yeah. it's glaring with Thomas Berry and Brian Sweeney. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I guess it's difficult to articulate exactly what I'm trying to get at, because it just seems like this A-Paul model is inclusive of everything, these different dimensions, but it, it doesn't really give us a way to break down that binary between mm -hmm. interior and exterior. It just acknowledges that there's both of these dimensions. But they're not separate, ever, right? So, uh, you know, trying to understand how the human being is to live with the rest of the Earth community. You know, for me, it's a question of like, what does it mean to be a person? What does it mean to have identity and sort of right to exist, you know? And I think you know, Thomas Berry tries to develop this sense of like, the rights of other sorts of beings. Uh, and for me, it's, it's almost trying to establish um, you know, why it is that we would have personal responsibility to non-human beings uh, and non-human systems. And the only way to really do that seems to be to personalize that in a sense. Um, and Yeah, I don't know, I guess Wilbur, Wilbur's metaphysical inclinations seem to be less personal and more uh, yeah. interesting. <coughs> in a way. And, and I guess, you know, it's true. I think, you know, people like Boff, with, you know, from a, a Christian background, would have more of a tendency to mm -hmm. see personality at work in nature. Whereas Wilbur is more, you know, mm -hmm. the doctor and this kind of Eastern approach. And I think they're both important. You know, you can start anthropomorphizing them too much if you get too uh, on the idea of personalizing nature. But I think it also shows that there's like, I don't know that Wilbur leaves room for nature having its own sort of intentions and. Uh, and there being other sorts of intelligences. Yeah. Yeah. That's but true. He, he actually argues against it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like I would like to jump back to to your question about sort of the certainly there's there's like a, an apologetics at work with sort of reductionist thinkers in this community where either they're sort of rejected or they're, they're understood to be important and meaningful in terms of some other bigger developmental process, right? So that uh, Descartes is good as long as we don't stay with Descartes and as long as we use him 
to get towards what we have now, which is, of course, better. And in that sense, um, I approach integral in a, in a very different way that maybe shouldn't even be called integral anymore because it's, it's, it's quite different in the sense that I think both, um, whether you're sort of cosmologizing your own existence as an individual within the context of the cosmos or you're sort of um, doing very broad systems thing like Wilbur's doing, like you're saying, like he, he's got a check like, in each box. You know, he's, he's reading all of them, he's integrating all of them. Which uh, I don't have a problem with per se. It's not, it's not what I would choose as a strategy. Um, I'm glad somebody's doing it. But um, so to pull back a little bit, uh, integral for me isn't, for one, it's not about um, being the most inclusive you can be. It's, it's not about that. It's not about um, incorporating as much as you can. It actually has, that's, that's like an element, but it's not even a fundamental element. It's not something that I would even say is crucial to doing integral work. Um, in that sense, I, I like Gebser's definition of integral as being a sort of transparency rather than sort of an all-encompassing conclusion, uh, inclusion much more. So that there's, there's an awareness of your perspective, you know, and um, to me, Wilbur is not more integral in the sense of more complete and incorporated than any of the people he criticizes as being partial. As far as I can see it, he's drawing from all these partial perspectives and saying, well, if we, if we get them all in there, then we'll have a complete perspective. And there's no account for the linkages between perspectives. So the perspectives themselves are partial. The linkages between them are also partial. And then within his Aqual framework, I'm more or less there for the quadrants. Although, as Matt's, Matt's pointing out, there's there's a deep mystery between what constellates inside and outside. So there's a partiality in the explanation there, mm -hmm. right? And that goes from, well, what, it goes horizontally between inside and outside and vertically between individual and collective. These are vacillating concepts. You know, and he does have a sense of an evolutionary perspective within his model, but I think that um, it also suffers from, a, you know, if we can distinguish between science and scientism, it, um, we can make an equal distinction between development and maybe developmentism, you know, and I think he definitely <laughs> suffers from a developmentism in that, um, for one, it's, it's silly to me to say that all things everywhere in a, in a hierarchical scheme transcend and include the previous levels, which to me I don't see evidence of. I see much more sort of branching particularity and I also see instances where things do transcend and include. So we could talk about um, nested hierarchies as well as non-nested hierarchies. And non-nested hierarchies in the sense of not being then ultimately part of some bigger nest where nest and non-nest are then nested, right? I'm talking about <coughs> genuine discontinuity, genuine incommensurability. And that's, that's a feature of the universe. And so for me, this question of like, well, how do we do integral work? Integral work has to first begin from, from an understanding that incorporation is, you know, in its last moments not possible. And the incorporation that you do have is partial and thereby not integral by that definition. Mm -hmm. Are we all together here? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're together. And so um, I think it's great what he's doing because it's, you know, if you're, you know, I've only read Sex, Ecology, Spirituality and a few essays that have come across my way. I think in those instances where, where he opens up new thinking to people who otherwise wouldn't have seen it, it's, it's great. But on another hand, I can't help but think that he's the Walmart of integral theory, where you can get your underwear, your soda, your videos, your DVDs, yeah. your, Brilliant. you know. Yeah, yeah. And you can also, you can, but these are all really good things, and they're all at a low cost. Mm -hmm. You don't really have to, there's little self-assembly required, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. <laughs> this is not, and this, this is not, this is not to be funny and not to say like, oh, you know, this is, this is some sort of satire. I'm serious. You know, there's benefits to having a storehouse like that. Mm -hmm. Costs go down. The, the intelligibility required goes down. You don't have to be an engineer to, you know, acquire these things. And so in some instances, it's, it's better. But at the same time, you know that Walmart is just 
not as good as the things that it copies and assimilates so that it can produce them at a cheaper price. You know, reading Gene Gebser and reading Ken Wilber, the disparity is huge. I mean, it's enormous. It's, I mean, I don't know. Um, so integral theory, it's not about incorporation. It's not about um, expanding spheres of care, wholeness, anything. It's not about holism. It's not about holism and it's not about reductionism and holism. It's about, it's, it's, it's something that, for me, for me it's a strategy and it's a transparency and it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an opening to the awareness that, um, like you're saying, you're tracing the history of ecology here from what it started out as, which was a response to certain conditions. So, you know, Ernest Haeckel is trying to figure out, well, how do we organize all of these different species and organisms, you know, and he starts by, well, these ones look the same. They have the same geometrical pattern. You know, so he starts arranging them like this, and then other people come, around, come along and say, well, you know, we can do finer taxonomies by doing other things, you know. So it's always in relation to a conversation that's already happened. Mm -hmm. And integral for me right. is an awareness of that conversation. Mm -hmm. That right now, integral Good. ecology needs to be something to address a certain set of, of issues. But it's not, it's not going to get there by doing a survey of everything that everybody on the planet has ever done. Sometimes I think a very partial, very specific, very particularized, very specialized perspective will do a lot more. Mm -hmm. you know? And again, not a lot more in the context of a lot of other things, but a lot more as separate, as special, as unique. You know, so um, I think ultimately he's barking up the wrong tree. But um, it's 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 certainly interesting what he's doing, I guess. To some Can you people. clarify more what integral means to you? I'm trying to understand. So I define integral as sort of the, a transparency to ongoing conversations, and and then we could maybe draw. Transparency. Yeah. So so that you're not you're not um, shut off. You're not behaving in a way that that shuts off other conversations that need your attention, right? Mm. So, and those are conversations that come from people, they come from, you know, what we call objects, they come from the cosmos, it's conversation, you know, mm -hmm. semiotic universe over here in my, my, little, yeah. my little piece of the pie. Um, <laughs> and so integral, integral is, is an attention to that and also an awareness of your own uh, inability to be at all places at all times. You know? mm -hmm. And that even in saying, Okay, I'm going to attend to my own particularity and attend to my own um, limited sort of finite ability to impact things. I'm also going to be aware that even that finitude can result in a sort of martyr, martyrdom that can also close conversations. So it's a constant struggle. You know, it's a constant struggle with, with the conversations of the universe, basically. So being integral is being willing to communicate? It's being willing to be interrupted yeah. and also develop conversations. Yeah, I think you find that same definition in the book, in Integral Ecology, which again, I highly recommend. Part of this is just a commercial for that book. <laughs> and because you definitely don't want to criticize um, sex ecology spirituality as being an exemplar Integral ecology, right? Because that's Wilbur four. Wilbur's like Wilbur five now. Yeah. <laughs> it's post metaphysical. There's integral methodological pluralism. Uh, there's much more. And can, I, can, I also, can, I, can I also throw in his credits that I, I've never actually been able to critique him? And this is I, a, I've actually also, never actually launched dumbest. a successful critique. No, because then you must enter the whole and, Hegelian diet. And these are the, these are two <laughs> different people yeah. that wrote uh, that wrote the book. Two very different people. Esper and Hargens being a PCC student, who's like really influenced by Morin. He's really into pansemiotics, biosemiotics. Um, and then uh, Michael Zimmerman isn't a Hegelian. He's not Wilbur, he's a Heideggerian. Mm -hmm. He's a Heideggerian environmental philosopher who's like really into hairway and cyborgism and stuff like that. Yeah. So these two guys are very different and um, very affirmative that their perspective is partial. And really what you want to do to look at it is the fact that integral ecology and with their framework is actually being used by people doing real work. Like, like, Hargens ran into Wilbur when he was doing work in Africa. And he also used it when he was doing work in Bhutan. That's how he first got in a, you know, to meet uh, Elizabeth Allison, where they interacted. Uh, also, Karen O'Brien works for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. She uses Aqua. 
And uh, so, you know, again, which is the, the Walmart analogy is pretty apt because it's actually getting stuff out there. Walmart disseminates stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, so that's, you know, that's why I like integral ecology. It's because it's a Walmart of something that's trying to, that Teilhard is too esoteric for. Gebser right. is not going to get used in, by the IPCC. Um, so that's one of the, the strong point, but also the weak point of a lot of this, is how much it resembles that kind of Walmartification of knowledge, or McDonaldization. Um, but yeah, but they're definitely acknowledging their particularity. That's, that's one thing that really comes across in this book, that they recognize the map is entirely partial, entirely messy, it never looks the same way. Every time you apply it, it's just a mess. You can't even think about it in terms of applying a map to a territory, because that metaphor is itself flawed. Um, so I just, I really recommend reading it. It's just a, it's a, it doesn't look like anything that Wilbur wrote. While at the same time it completely follows everything Wilbur writes and it looks like a carbon copy of Sex Ecology Spirituality. Yeah. So just as a literary examination, it's a really, yeah, even stylistically, even the proportion of footnotes, yeah. the body of the text, <laughs> <laughs> the series, and the number of pages, everything. Yeah. Um, it, it's completely a carbon copy, yet completely a different story because of the critiques that came out against sex ecology spirituality. I mean, uh, like the acknowledgments in the book, it, um, thank um, Richard and Angana, yes. right. thank Stephen Goodman, uh, thanks Jorge Ferrer. Mm -hmm. All people who have a lot to say about being integral in a way that isn't Wilbur. Mm -hmm. And that's the influences that go into this book. So it's a very interesting Wilberian and anti-Wilberian kind of thing. So do you think that it's accurate to have a Wilbur slash Zimmerman as Bernhardt's column in this summary here? Or would it be better to uh, distinguish them a little bit? Um, I don't want to pretend they're not using Wilbur, because they are. Yeah, they clearly and are. So, and so I like go, going ahead and keeping the W around. Because okay. okay. um, uh, like Walmart, it also <laughs> stands for Walmart. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't see anything wrong with the fact that it's capitalized, W, that it's capitalistic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of that yeah. is, yeah, all, exactly. The views from win. Right. Right. Camera, we, be, we like winning. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Well, well, wins. Oh, and one other. We also were talking about the universe story, which I think, in a lot of ways, is especially because it's more personal, is a better approach to integral ecology. <coughs> but I don't think that Swim and Barry are saying there's one cosmology and it's given to us by science. Okay. Um, I get that from Swim. I don't know Brian. Don't and know it's hard to say. If you read the texts, like hanging out with them in class, I don't know, they say all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but if you read the texts, they're little, always a little more careful. And like the, I think the universe story, the one cosmology, is actually the universe. Like That's the story. Mm -hmm. And so science has a perspective on it, and religions have a perspective on it. And they all need to align themselves with the actual story. Now, if you look at the journey of the universe, which is forthcoming, right? Um, and if you look at the manuscript that's being published with it, etc., they're talking about a 13.7 billion year right. story, and they're talking about the development of galaxies and atoms and you know chemistry, and it is scientific. And he's doing it in such a way where what what he's emphasizing is the sense of awe that emerges when we take in the grandeur of the results of all these inquiries. And when I read it. Um, there were passages, maybe not the whole thing, I think it would be a misinterpretation to take the whole thing this way, but there were passages where I couldn't tell the difference between what he was saying and what a reductionist like Stephen Jay Gould would say. It's just totally scientific. And it's awesome! Yeah. And it's full of personality because the person who's saying it is full of personality. But in terms of what it is itself, it's not really clear. And yeah, he, I he does. There are, there are in initial drafts he was saying it's just blind. And that was later taken out. Yeah. But that impulse is there mm -hmm. to say that it's blind. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to stand by what I said. I don't know Barry very well, but I will stand by the criticism of Sweden. And especially, I mean, I think they'd acknowledge that they're telling the story from a scientific perspective. Yeah. Well, especially, Brian's a physicist. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't begrudge him his background. Um, but, but I think the story that they're telling isn't given to us by science. I think that's, that's right. I think the okay. givenness of the story is from the universe. Um, and that's, I think, the difference. And that makes it such that religious cosmologies don't have to adjust themselves to scientific cosmologies. It's that science and religion are having to adjust themselves to the, the thing itself. Yeah. 
Um, so that's been our great work, is to actually adjust our species to the evolutionary unfolding that, that's given to us. Um, and so then, the, you know, so Swim approaches that from science, and so it sounds kind of scientific reductionism at, in parts. But that's just his telling of the story. And, but really, I mean, the story is a multiplicity, and every one of us is a unique telling of it. Um, so yeah, so I don't think they're intending at all to subsume religion under science. Either, either with Wilbur also. That's something I think all these people have in common, likewise with Bach, who does a lot of science spirituality stuff. Um, never subsuming religion into science. I don't think. But they're never articulating a, a cosmology that is intelligible from traditional religious perspectives. That's true. Well, Bob no probably more so because okay. he's working from a Christian cosmology. Yeah, okay. Um, and so, like, cry the earth, cry the poor, you'd find some of that. But yeah, so that's just still Christian cosmology. Yeah. And so that's the sort of thing where they're like, okay, so we're just waiting for everybody else to do their universe story. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's a lot of what the Forum on Relig Religion and Ecology is working with, is trying to facilitate the expression of religious cosmologies from all the world's traditions. But, what, but why is that? Even, isn't it always already the case that religions have been doing that? Aren't they already operating within their own telling of the well, universe? Well, but it's always in revision. Yeah. yeah. And so, so who um, are they to say, it's time for you now to revise? Isn't that something that's going to come from within the tradition? Well, it's more like this is just a hub for those revisions to express uh -huh. themselves and yeah. to collaborate with one another. Um, so yeah, it's not a command from outside yeah. saying, hey, religions, you need to do something. It's more just noticing, especially as religious people, um, that there are own cosmologies are changing, and we need a form within which those cosmologies can interact, especially for to facilitate interfaith communication, to make sure that as these cosmologies are developing, Christian cosmology, Jewish cosmology, Islamic, that they're also working with one another. So that presumably the cosmology that we're going to start articulating would be a real cosmopolitics, like the Isabel Stanger's kind of cosmopolitics. It's always in the process of being revised. Um, so it'd be very vague. It'd be a sort of nomadological uh, approach to cosmology. At best. But I'm, I worry that these kinds of forums and sort of attempts at integrality are really saying that, or at least implying, that everybody should be coming to some kind of consensus. And I don't want to accept that. I, I don't want to eliminate the tradition's ability to say, this is what's really going on, and then to caricature other ones. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to say that they don't have that right. Hmm. Um, I really like. Okay, so in terms of integralism, I had a recent epiphany, and Adam sort of voiced it in a way, but I had a, a recent epiphany that almost everybody conflates integralism, integralism with inclusion, mm -hmm. which basically means enclosure, mm -hmm. and I really. I've learned a lot from your pointing out that integral means untouched. And that is a way for us to, to, to bring into this conversation the necessity for us to let things, let the other, let, you know, be just as the other is. And not try to say from outside what the actual meaning of this thing is. To take it up into a system of the identity of identity and difference or whatever. Um, so, you know, these, these conversations are already happening. I, I did a presentation on how the conversation is already happening within Tibetan Buddhism. And I don't think that anybody that I was talking about is represented, per se, in the forum of religion and ecology. The forum seems to have a particular ideology behind it. And that's what makes me nervous. It's just a sense, while we're being vague. It's just a, a word. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they include. I mean, because it's, uh, it's a very loosely organized group of people. Yeah. Um, so it'd be hard to say what they account for, what they don't account for. They're definitely explicit about not trying to uh, achieve some sort of universal consensus. That's okay. the project of, like, Baird Calicut, okay. uh, to come up with a global environmental ethic. That would be something like consensus. Everybody can agree on that animals have intrinsic value, therefore we should have animal rights and that kind of thing, that the community should have rights. And, um, so, yeah. As far as that goes, they're explicit, but they're not looking for consensus. Okay, that's um, a helpful clarification. Yeah. But as far as the relationship to Buddhism, um, that's, uh, and in particular, the, the dialogue you were looking at, um, that's the sort of thing that I think would 
Like, you are really part of the forum. I think you're on the email list. I, it's true. So I the fact that you did that is actually evidence that they, that they um, yeah. are working with that perspective. Like, I don't think they include that perspective. I don't know if they're working with that. It's like, no, they are. I heard you work with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't include me just because I'm passively receiving the emails. Oh, no, you're active, actively <laughs> receiving it. There's no, there's no yeah. absolute passivity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we certainly think about passive uh, yeah, synthesis. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's entirely passive. Um, so yeah, that, that, that totally counts. That, that, was, that was a contribution to the forum. Um, so all this is extremely loose. I think it's important to keep in mind. You might belong to groups you don't really know you belong to. <laughs> <laughs> like all of a sudden you find out you're working for Walmart. Yeah. I'd also like yeah. to throw in that, and to plug me speaking next week in a more articulate, thought out way, that for me what was so you know you have you have this allotted amount of time to speak on what integral ecology is, where it should go, and what it can do, and then you know it becomes kind of like a conversation like this. Well, like what's in and what's out? What what do, what do we include in integral ecology? As this is integral, this is not integral. This is good integral. This is integral, but it's bad integral. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a moral valence to everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I started thinking uh, rather than okay, what what is my all-encompassing ontological description of what integral ecology needs to be, I started thinking in terms of curriculums and sort of, and, you know, in keeping with my sort of semiotic conversational um, mm -hmm. mode that rather than doing, suggesting metaphysics, I'd like to suggest curriculums, you know, <coughs> curriculum of mm -hmm. um, And in, in that sense, the conversation totally changes, like is, is is Wilbur di different from Hargens and Zimmerman? Is Aqual better than Barry and Boff? It, it becomes irrelevant because if you're developing a curriculum about integral ecology, then the one really big book published under the title Integral Ecology should be read and studied. Oh, yeah. You know, as should Barry, as should Boff, mm -hmm. as, should, as should the list. Mm -hmm. You know, and. The, so I started thinking in terms of like, well, what would I include in that curriculum? Like, given that you have, you know, a certain availability of resources, you have to make sure that students graduate at a certain point in time, that you can only teach so much, and that you have to accomplish certain goals. Um, that for me, like, kind of opened it up and kind of removed a little bit of that. I mean, it, morality is is present, I think, regardless. But it, for, for me, it was a lot easier to think about in, in integral ecology in terms of what that curriculum would look like. Not whether or not I think Wilbur is right. Mm -hmm. you know, if I think he's right or wrong, it's still teachable. And it's still a thinking tool, even if you disagree with it. You know? So I'm, I'm more interested in, in hearing about what other people need to develop to attend to those I, we's, and it's that they're in relation to, that they want to, for me everything's a very sort of muscular, repetitive activity, like what are the muscles you're trying to strengthen? What are the skills you're trying to gain from doing this thing called integral ecology, you know? And um, I was just going to say, I'm in the perspectives on integral ecology class, which I guess I'm the only person in here currently heading up, but, um, but they move through, um, you know, they, they, they touch on equal, they touch on, they, we got some um, um, ZEH um, <laughs> things. Um, I don't know anything about Boff. We did a little berry. I think we'll probably do more berry as we get into sort of the, uh, we're reading like the entire animate earth um, this and next week. Um, and yeah, seven part of and we're doing plan B. And then I think we're getting, you know, this, we're moving into sort of Gaia and then we're moving into um, world spirituality and then going back into sort of other, and we did, we did eco-feminism last week and we did deep ecology the week before and it's like, mm, not quite deep enough because uh, it's only really one class and <coughs> Which by the way is why I'm suggesting that it need to do what it needs to do, it needs to be yeah. its, a whole degree program. I, I'm, and I've been telling everybody that I'm getting a degree in integral ecology, which I know is not quite true, but... But it is true, because you're going to design your own experience yeah, like as it, you go through it, this. Integral ecology 
was what I was the phrase that appealed to me more. Like when I'm looking at programs, when I, I mean, I'm only, I, I haven't actually met you yet, but I'm Josh. And, and I'm here about a month so far. Um, and uh, yeah, and when I was looking at programs, like there's some that are sort of doing, e e you know, eco psychology, and there's some that are sort of doing deep ecology, and there's like different aspects, but integral ecology seemed like, oh, that makes sense is what I would want to be studying and what I would feel comfortable telling people I was doing. Because I'm not, I mean, I, I obviously I care about the psychological aspect I care about, but integrating it also is, uh, and, and I'm really interested in how deep you guys are considering all of it. And I hope that once I get a little further in reading, more of it. But my sense of it just on the class and being, you know, in coming into mid-October, like my first semester, and doing this per perspectives class is the class didn't seem to get super what didn't seem all that impressed with AQUAL and didn't seem super invested in figuring out those processes. My, and this might just be me, so I, I can't speak for the rest of the class, but my sense of it is we're more interested in like mm, moving into the, maybe the social justice stuff, maybe like figuring out how to actually actively uh, use it and, and not sort of how to map things onto different scenarios. Um, how to actively sort of build the, the integral ecology project. So I'm definitely interested in, in uh, what the group is thinking about doing next and, and that kind of thing. Um, but that's, yeah, and in terms of um, what you guys want, what, what we want to be like biting into now. Um, that's at least what I want to be biting into. I want to be, I, I'm interested in like re-souling, re-enchanting things and I'm into, you know. And, and addressing the actual, because I think, you know, on the ground nobody cares so much what, who we're drawing from and like this particular part of this and this particular part of this, they're interested in what we can do because there's so much that we need to do and there's so much, so many different aspects. So, um, yeah. I guess in the classroom we, we, we talk about what sorts of knowledges are uh, appropriate but right. don't necessarily bite into them. We don't, we don't develop a practice, mm -hmm. integral yeah. ecology practice. It's mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. theoretical argument where you say what well, and why. And well, it's fair enough because you want to know it's the only way that you actually sort of know what you're doing is yeah. having all the different understandings that you can put into it. Or I mean, I'm interested in also what you're saying about it's on. Um, would you say it's it doesn't touch? Well, if you want, if you're interested in learning about touch, you should talk to Sam. Yeah. Um, but I had a whole thing about noticing that people conflate integralism with inclusion. Right. With inclusionism, which is another way of saying enclosure. Yeah. If you look up, you know, the etymology of inclusion. Mm -hmm. It means enclosure. Um, and so we just leave, we don't, we, we bring it in, but we sort of let it exist. Well, yeah, well, I'm influenced by uh, um, Levinas here, Emmanuel Levinas, mm -hmm. who talks about um, exteriority. And I'm, I'm not a, not only am I not an expert in Levinas, but I don't know anything about Levinas except for a kind of like billboard Levinas. <laughs> but um, the sense that I have from it, or what's being inspired in me by that name, is that the other is infinitely beyond my capacity to enclose that other mm -hmm. in a schema of understanding in my yeah. own terms. Yeah. By definition, yeah. that's what the other is. The other is what is necessarily and always beyond. Mm -hmm. And so there's a connection between the other and the infinite, insofar as the minute we've named the infinite, the, no, the actual meaning of infinity has already exceeded our naming of it. Mm -hmm. And so it is with otherness. And there, in that sense, exteriority is essential to a, a kind of a, a, a thoroughgoing ethical sensitivity. So the effort to include the effort to identify the other in terms of an all-encompassing context right, right. does violence in subtle or not so subtle ways to
to the actual integrity of the otherness. Integrity here meaning that the other is untouched. That's what I learned from Sam. So Sam wants to develop our sense of touch, and I don't actually yet understand what he's saying there. But Levinas has taught me what I just summarized for you yeah, about otherness and exteriority. And that's something, now Levinas, I wouldn't call Levinas a postmodern thinker. Postmodernism is a, is a clunky term. Most of the people who get called postmodern don't call themselves postmodern. There's only a handful of people who self-consciously use that. So not only is there postmodernism lacking in PCC, but there's all the precursors of postmodernism in terms of phenomenology and whatever else you want to do. So Levinas is a huge voice. I agree. He does have, uh, Levinas' the whole thing on touch, he uh, writes a lot about the caress. Mm -hmm. And it's precisely the thing, like, if you want to touch something in a way that doesn't do it violence, you want to touch it while also leaving it untouched and leaving it intact. And that's what happens when you caress. There's something about the repetitive motion of the caress, where each time you touch, you clearly didn't touch it, so you need to touch it again. Mm -hmm. And you didn't touch it. The, the infinite be being that you're touching completely exceeds your touch. So every time you touch it, you actually didn't touch because you let the being be. So you keep touching and keep touching. And that's the soft mo motion of the caress. But you also see in um, sort of the repetitive uh, motions of lovemaking. There's something that's like, why do you have to keep touching, keep touching? Because every touch only vaguely approximates the infinite being that you're actually trying to touch. Mm -hmm. Um, so you keep trying to touch one another, but each time you can't because you're both infinite. And how does the infinite touch the infinite? Um, you know, so I mean, the whole problem of love is then a problem of how to touch something in a way that leaves it untouched. Because that's how love touches, right? When you love your your significant other, you want them to be them, but at the same time, you want to embrace them and have them all to yourself. So how do you have that? Where you have the other all to yourself? Yet they're still other. They're still themselves. They're still growing and having their own life, their own hopes and dreams. Um, so that, to me, then, is what integral ecology would be about. It would be precisely about learning uh, to encounter the other as other, and that would mean other schools of thought, but also other organisms, other life forms, other elements. Um, so yeah, for Levinas, Google Levinas caress, and there's a lot of good quotes. He's just a good writer, <laughs> despite the fact. <coughs> Um, L E V I N A S. I don't know. You should read secondary sources. You <laughs> <laughs> should read lots. He is don't start with extremely people. difficult to read. Mm -hmm. <coughs> sure, yeah, I'd stick with quotes. Quotes from Google, also Wikipedia. I've <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty far with a billboard like this. Especially if you're already intelligent. It seems like this idea, right. Levinas', <laughs> Levinas the idea that ethics is first philosophy and it's crucial to yeah. the end of the Yeah. Like, knowing is a kind of ethics. Like, there's a whole, uh, every, every form of knowledge that we have about nature applies a certain way of interacting with nature. Mm -hmm. 